Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're continuing our consumer arithmetic series by looking at further work with percentages. In this video we're going to cover a variety of topics such as how to express a amount as a percentage of another amount, how to find a percentage change, how to increase and decrease an amount by a percentage and how to find a new price or an original amount using some worded problems. I'm going to take you through a variety of worked examples in this video. If you're not sure what a percentage is or how to change a percentage into a decimal or a fraction, it's worth watching our first video in the series for a recap on that. This video is aimed at students right across Australia in Year 8. It's part of the Year 8 Australian curriculum, but it is something that's a really important part of the Year 11 maths curriculum in Victoria, Tasmania, Queensland, Western Australia and New South Wales. I'm in Queensland and I teach general maths. And one of the things I do experience with Year 11 students is that a lot of them struggle with how to change things into a percentage, with how to increase an amount by a percentage, and especially how to find an original amount given a percentage change and a new amount. Now, because it wasn't covered since Grade 8, a lot of students seem to have forgotten from Grade 9 and 10, and it really doesn't really get touched on explicitly in those particular years. So if you're one of those students who's forgotten what you did in Grade 8, this is going to be the video for you. Let's kick off our first worked example today by finding out how to express one amount as a percentage of another amount. Now, our unit is focused on consumer arithmetic, which is money. But in this particular example, I've decided to use kilograms because this principle applies to anything that you can measure. We're going to find what percentage 15 kilos is out of 75 kilos. We're going to change this firstly into a fraction. Now, 15 kilos is the smaller amount, and we want to find that as a percentage of the other amount, 75. So whatever we're starting with, we're going to put as our numerator, and we're trying to find that as a percentage, 75 kilos, which becomes our denominator. We're now going to multiply our fraction by 100 to change it into a percentage. Now, the reason we do this, we discovered in our previous videos that when we want to change fractions into percentages, we multiply the fraction by 100. Now, it's always easier to multiply a fraction by a fraction. So in my second part of this question, I've actually changed that 100 into 100 over 1 because any whole number is actually a fraction over 1. It makes it a lot easier to simplify your fractions. Now, we can evaluate this in short steps. 15 times 100 is 1,500. 75 times 1 is 75. And we can simplify that a little bit further and by dividing the top by 75 and the denominator by 75 and that will give us a percentage of 20%. So if you're working it out on paper, you'd have to do some extra work on the side. However, if you're in year 11 or 12, you can just jump straight onto your calculator. They're not gonna to expect to see that level of working. So we would simply do 15 divided by 75 on your calculator times 100, bingo, you get 20%. It's a lot quicker, trust me. <laughs> Let's look at our second worked example today. We're gonna to work out a percentage change. Olivia had $160 in her bank account at the beginning of the year and $250 at the end of the year. Calculate the percentage change. Now, the first thing we need to do in this particular example is calculate our increase in dollars. How much did her bank account grow by in dollar terms? We simply take $250, take away $160, and we work out that her bank account's grown by $90. Well done, Olivia. Our second step is to work out what that increase is as a percentage of our original amount. Now, this is where a lot of students get tripped up. And the key word there I've put in bold is the word original. Anytime we calculate a percentage change, we always, 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 always calculate it off our original amount. Original meaning the amount in the beginning. She had $160 in the beginning. So that's always going to be what we calculate that $90 as a percentage of. Now, remember from our previous example, to do that, we're going to make that into a fraction. We're going to use our increase of $90 as our numerator. And that original amount, the amount we had at the beginning, becomes our denominator. Very, very important. If you don't take anything away from this video, take away. It has to be divided by the original amount. Okay, we're now going to multiply that by 100 to make it into a percentage. And we're going to simplify that a little bit further on paper. And that does a bit of cancelling there to simplify even further. And then I can work out that there's, there's four 25s in 100. Therefore, there's four times nine to get it into 900, which is 36%. Nine fours are 36. Also, once again, much easier to do on your calculator. 90 divided by 250 times 100 gives you 36. 
add your percentage symbol afterwards. Let's look at our next worked example. We're going to work out what a percentage increase looks like. We're going to increase $2,800 by 12%. Increase means to make it bigger. So our final answer definitely needs to be bigger than $2,800. That's an always an important thing to check. So firstly, we're going to find 12% of $2,800. So 12 over 100 times 2,800. Simplify that a little further, do some cancelling, and that gives us $336. You could have also done this on the calculator by doing 12 divided by 100 times 2,800 equals 336. So when we increase $2,800, 12% um, of that amount is 336. Now remember I said at the beginning, to increase something means it's going to get bigger. Well, 336 is not bigger than 2,800. We haven't increased it yet. We've just found out what 12% of it is, which means that's less. So we need to add that increase to our original amount. So we take that 336, which was the 12%, we add that to the $2,800 and we've now increased that $2,800 to $3,136. Now, a lot of people find this method to be a method that they understand really well. To first of all, calculate the 12% and then add it on. There is a shortcut, however, and we always love a shortcut. Now, a lot of people like to jump straight to the shortcut and that is completely fine, but you need to understand what's actually happening. First of all, here's my original amount, $2,800. It's 100% of itself. Okay, now I'm going to increase that by 12%. Okay, so you can see that's the yellow part, the amount it increased by. So that's my increase of 12%. Of now that new amount, which is the total, is the 100%, that blue box, plus the increase, which means I've got 100%, the original amount, plus 12%, is 112% of the original amount. So understanding what you're actually doing is important. I can simply multiply that particular original amount by one plus the percentage increase as a decimal. Let's have a look at how that looks. 2,800 times one plus 0 0.012. 0 0.012 is the 12% as a decimal. That's simply 2,800 times 1.12, which is $3,136. We got the same answer as we did. We just took a lot less steps. We didn't have to work out the increase first and then add it on. We're able to just jump straight to that final answer. So you may want to take some notes here at this point and pause the video. Now, you may also want to pause the video for a next worked example and see if you can work out how to do that one by yourself. We're going to decrease $152.80 by 65%. I'm going to show you the long way and then the shortcut. So step one, we could find the 65% of $152.80 first. So 65 over 100 times by $152.80. And I've just jumped straight to that with the calculator. It's $99.32. That's what 65% of it is. But we haven't decreased it here yet. Now, obviously, logic tells us when we decrease something, our final answer is going to be smaller. And this is where people forget that next step because they've already got a smaller answer. So they think, well, I'm done. But no, we haven't actually decreased it yet. We've just found what 65% is. We've actually got to subtract that from our original amount. $152.80 take away $99.32 gives us $53.48. That's our final answer. That's the long way. Let's look at the shortcut. So first of all, here's our original amount, $152.80. It's 100% of itself. Now, we're going to decrease that by 65%, which is almost two-thirds. Um, and take it down to a much smaller amount. So if we take 65%, that means we've got 35% left because 100 take away 65 is 35. So we could actually find what 35% is of that original amount. That new amount is going to be 35%. So to decrease an amount, we're going to multiply the original amount by one take away the percentage decrease. You might want to write that down. So let's do it. 152.8 times, and we've got in brackets, one minus... 0.65, which is the same as $152.80 times 0.35, which gives us the same answer we had on our previous slide, $53.48. We get to the same place, it just gets us there a little bit quicker. Let's look at another worked example. We're into some word problems now. We've got a store and they're running a sale with 25% off the price of every item. That's actually a pretty good sale. Anita wants to buy a pair of jeans and they're originally priced at $89. How much will she have to pay after her discount? 
Well, there's some words in here that you may not be familiar with, and it's important to understand what the question's asking of you. Firstly, when a price is discounted or it's on sale, it means we're reducing or decreasing the price. So we're decreasing by a percentage. We're going to actually decrease $89, our original amount, by 25%. So it's actually what we just did in our previous example, but in this case, it's part of a word of problem with some new vocabulary, the word discount. So we're going to multiply 89 by 1 minus the percentage decrease, which is 89 times 1 minus 0 0.25, that 25% as a decimal, which is 1 take away 0 0.25 is 0 0.75, 89 multiplied by that gives us $66.75. So have a little think about it before you move on. Is my new amount $66 less than what I started with, $89? Yes, it is, which means I've definitely saved some money, which you would expect on a sale. Obviously, if you ended up with an amount that was more, if you used the plus um, operator instead of a minus, and you ended up with a bigger amount than $89, well, that's not a sale I would go to, and you know you've done the wrong thing. Okay, we're on to our second last worked example today. And this is one of the ones that people typically struggle with, finding an original amount. Let's look at the worked problem. David bought a used car for $5,000. That's what David paid. The salesman told him he had saved 18%. How much was the car originally worth? Now, I'm going to provide you with the formula here. We've been using that formula in a particular different way. Our new price is going to be equal to that original price multiplied by one take away the percentage decrease. So we need to work out what that original price is. It's in the middle of this formula. So let's use that formula now. We're going to simply substitute the information we have into the formula. And it would have been a good idea to write that formula down. You're going to need to memorize it. So $5,000 is equal to that original price multiplied by the 1 minus 0 0.18 because it's a price decrease. So now we're going to transpose our equation. What that means is we're going to move numbers around in our equation and work out what the original price is. We're going to make the original price the subject of our equation. So firstly, I'm going to simplify what was in the brackets. One takeaway 0 0.18 is 0 0.82. 5,000 divided by 0 0.82, because remember, initially, the original price is multiplied. So to get the original price by itself, I've got to do the opposite, which is divide. 5,000 divided by 0 0.02 will give me my original price. The original price was $6,097.56. David saved a fair bit. Let's look at our final worked example. Xmart buys all of its products from Egypt and marks the cost up by 15% to create a selling price. A bag sells for $30. How much did the bag cost Xmart? Now, in our previous example with David, we were looking at a percentage decrease because David got the car at a discount. In this case, we are looking at a situation where a store is buying something from somewhere, adding 15%. And then that added 15% gives us our selling price. So we're actually talking about percentage increases, which is the opposite. So this is what a markup is. It's adding something to the price. It's a percentage increase. So our formula is going to change. Our new price is going to equal that original price, the 100%, plus that in percentage increase. Okay, so we've done this with some numbers earlier when I showed you those different columns. Now we're doing it with some worked examples. But we need to find the original price, not the new price. So we're going to do the same thing we did with David and the car, except we're going to use our algebra and work with a new formula here. You might want to write it down. So we're going to substitute the information we have into our formula. We've got the $30, which is our final place, and that is equal to our original price, whatever Xmart bought the bag for, um, multiplied by 1 plus the 15% markup. So let's simplify firstly what's in the brackets. We've got 1 plus 0 0.15, that's 1.15. It's multiplied by that original price. So to do the reverse of that and get the original price all by itself, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 1.15. And now we have the original price all by itself. We could put that information into our calculator and we'll find that the cost to X mark, X mark is $26.09. Well, that's all we have time for. We have lots of videos coming up in this series. So do like and subscribe to the channel so you'll know when they're available for you. Our next video is going to be on best buys, which is something that everyone from year 7 to year 12 is not going to want to miss out on. And just a quick side note, if you are looking for something in this series on compound interest, your best bet is to move over to the playlist on loans and investments.
Welcome again to all of our new subscribers to the channel and do follow us on Facebook. That way you'll hear when new videos are posted. You'll also find out some new tips and tricks as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Natalie McClatchy. Have a wonderful day.